after the show, be sure to get your Friendo Club t-shirt from the Stephen Larson merch store at Tee Public. Get them for a discount now while it's still new. The link is in the description. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. Welcome back to Going In Raw, Larson. I'm, I'm to the people, to people, and then I'm saying to you also, welcome oh. back. Welcome to our set. We don't have the, the bar tables actually in your car. Yeah, we don't have time to set it up today, so next week. Next week, we're going to set up, we're going to have a bar table, possibly a drink, depending on what time we do it. We're doing it kind of early in the day right now, so I'm not sure it's throwing down a bunch of beers. You're fine with it. Yeah. Shots? Can we toss shots on the table, too? We have to do this first and do other stuff afterwards. Is that a shoot? That is a shoot. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, I wanted to point out that we got this great. Let's see the going in raw set. The entire experience is is an evolving one. Yeah. It's dynamic. We've got our first p picture up here. It's that time Dan met primetime Brian Lee. Very real picture right there. So, uh, and Dan, we checked with our lawyers. We're able to do that. We can do that. <laughs> I didn't. We don't have any lawyers. Uh, let's see. So anyways, uh, this is the go-home show to the Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. Last night's Raw was the go-home Raw to the Royal Rumble. Yeah. What was your... Th was it a strong go-home show? I, I don't think it was. No, it was a lot of filler. I'll say this, though. When placed into the context, because again, we have sort of a showdown happening between... A, a semi-showdown between Brock and Roman Reigns. Yeah. It's... It's a stronger go home than the WrestleMania build last year. I was kind of remember. I was reminded of this. Oh, uh, when they were they were wrestling over the the belt, literally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was bad. Stronger than that because I was I was actually surprised at the end of this segment or at the end of the show rather when uh, as soon as Lesnar gets in the ring, Reigns gave him a spear, and that's what we want to see. We just want to see these guys throw. Yeah. So in that respect, it was strong. Well, that segment was strong. That segment was strong. I mean, the stuff that needed to be strong, I think, kind of was. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't watch like half a Raw last night. So I watched the whole thing. But usually I can tell when it's good because my Twitter timeline blows up with, wow, this is great. You found out that you can watch it on your iPad thanks to Xfinity's app. Well, I think I kind of knew that. I've never tried to do it. Right, exactly. But you enjoy the experience. It was better than not watching it. That's good. Uh, okay, so let's take this beat by beat. Um, the opening segment. Well, we need we need a sound effect if we're gonna do rock cap. Oh yeah. Do we Me do that? advocating for the sound effect? Do we do talk. that? I know. See. <laughs> Spit on me, rock cap. <laughs> uh, how did it open? Oh yeah, Jericho opened it. Uh, no, Reigns came out. Reigns came out. Did 70, I didn't see like the first seven minutes. I looked at my computer, it was 5.07, I was like, oh shit, what did I miss? Did 70 come out? It was just Jericho, right? It was just Jericho. Oh, it was just and, Jericho. Then, and then the League of Nations came out. Yeah, and then the League of Nations came out. Rusev spat some funny game. You he, know, we were... we were. The, Jericho was wearing a dinner jacket with no shirt. I know, but you know, for the last two weeks we've been asking for a goofier Jericho. Yes. And we kind of got that. The a opening statement, bit, you're and right. more so when he was uh, refereeing the uh, the rain. When he was match. refing, when he's telling them to leave the ring area, that I was, was a big fan of that because number one, he did cartwheels, and I think Jericho probably knows this because he's older. And when you get older, you sort of stop caring a little bit more. Yeah, like he was wearing a tight ref shirt, and yeah. so you look at the stripes, and they're kind of bulging out because he's got a bit of a belly these days, which is totally fine. He's paid his dues. He's allowed to have a little bit of a belly. Yeah. But it was especially pronounced when he was doing cart like horrible cartwheels. Well, I think they were intentionally horrible. Exactly. Cartwheels. And this and his little shirt was like popping up a little bit. I thought that was hilarious. Um, and you're right, we got we got goofier Jericho and look, what happens? It works. Yeah. It works when placed in the in the proper context. Um, and Rusev was was a highlight of the uh, opening segment for me. The League of funny. Nations, the League of Nations, they're weaker than they should be. Yeah. They're weaker than they should be. They're the, the B heel faction. Wyatt's are the A heel faction. Yeah. I kind of feel like that needs to be I know, flipped. but that's tough because is this, I like the Wyatt. Does this mean something that I don't know? <laughs> oh, is this a bad thing? I don't this, know. This is a British No, I know. But don't say do this. They should flip them. Flip them, I'll do that. Flip them. Flip, flip them. Flip them? Just this? Okay. Flip. That works. I'm just saying this. I like League the, of Nations I, should be the A heel team. Wyatt's and B. We'll, we'll get to or the, 1A and 1B. We'll, we'll get to the Wyatt's in a second. Um... Yeah, they, they just feel, they feel weaker than they should. I feel like, I, okay, so let's go to SmackDown really quick. Del Rio won the belt back off of Callisto. Yeah. All right. Um, obviously, Callisto wins the belt back at the Rumble. I would think so. We'll get to that when we do our Rumble predictions. Okay. 
so that opening segment, Reigns wasn't as bad as I think he probably could have been there. Rain, I really feel, I honestly think that Reigns is, is, and this happens with reps, but I think it has to do maybe with, and this is rare, you put the belt on somebody, and usually if the guy is already hot, the belt helps increase that. Yeah. But if a guy is tepid, doesn't do shit for doesn't him. Doesn't do anything. And it kills the belt. It does. I think the, the, the pressure being off reins to win the belt, and it's funny because obviously it's all fake. Mm -hmm. But in terms of your performance, your character, you trying to reach that next level as a performer, as a professional, having that belt was, I think, a huge obstacle for him, mm -hmm. professionally speaking. He seems much more comfortable. He seems way more comfortable is the long-winded point I was just making. There. And I think also it's it's they're tailoring his character to his strengths as opposed to making him something yes. that he is not. And he's not, but going along with that, he's more comfortable and it took him a long time to get here, but I honestly think that the belt was that hump. I Maybe. really, I really did because there is seemed to be a stark difference between then and now. Yeah. Like right before the belt and right after the belt, it's like, okay, now I can relax a little bit. I have the belt. Mm -hmm. Now I can really show people what I can do as opposed to trying to appease I don't know who, you know, the crowd, yeah. Vince, Triple H, yeah. who, you know. Well, and I think also it helps that he wasn't getting the same, you know, negative reactions as he was a year ago. Right, exactly, because he was booked properly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so he does feel a lot more comfortable. They still need to pull back a little bit on him being, hey, I'm a cool guy. Maybe pull back a little bit on that. Yeah, a little bit. But he was okay. I, I like that when Jericho was in the ring, he wasn't, at the beginning, he was like, I'm glad you're back, Chris, but you're not Brock Lesnar, mm -hmm. and that's what I want to talk. I like that. He, he, he gets to business. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, that's good writing right there. Yeah, the League of Nations, I, I feel like they should be stronger. Yeah, they should. They've got a lot of, I mean, you know, granted, we have our opinions on Seamus, but Seamus, in terms of his character, he's a strong character. He should be tougher. He should, they he's, should be strong. He's legitimately disliked by the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, people don't like him at all. Mm -mm. Um, I love Rusev. Rusev and Wade Barrett still looks like he's just happy to be there. He, I think he is. Like the whole time during the segment, he was pointing to people in the crowd laughing and smiling. <laughs> That doesn't really fit the mood, man. <laughs> oh, I like that though. I would love to. I would love if that was sort of his side gimmick because he just got distracted. He's because... this close to being one of the social outcasts right now. You're this really... close. He could easily be replaced just... by McGillicuddy. Yeah. <laughs> or what are they? Adam called Rose. Now? Yeah. Now I don't know about Adam Rose. Adam Rose is just happy to be the. Adam Rose is the King Barrett of the social outcasts. I don't know. And I think I think Bo Dallas thinks that he's too good for them. Because he is. That's the thing about him. He is. In that, that, their segment last night when they all got the mic except Bo Dallas and Bo, and Bo Dessel. That was pretty funny, though, because I think that was in character, and I think that might have been planned. Yeah. Because oh, yeah, yeah. Heath Slater grabs it, and, he, and it's supposed to be Bo Dallas. Yeah. I thought that was good. They've got, I mean, they've, they've got decent, somehow they've got decent chemistry. Yeah. I, you can tell all those guys don't take it too seriously, but just serious enough, and they like to have fun, but they're yeah. just not being booked. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh... So let's see here, uh, divas. We had Charlotte. The uh, it was Becky Lynch versus. There were two. There were Brie. two divas matches, weren't there? Yeah, Natalia against Brie. Sorry, Natalia and Paige came out with her. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen her. And then it was uh, Char uh, sorry, Becky Lynch against Tamina. That I didn't see. I did see a lot of the Natalia. Match. I like Natalia a lot. Um, yeah, the sh everything they're doing with Charlotte and Becky right now was great. Yeah, it is. It's been I, really enjoyable. I, do you think there's any chance? Is there any chance? Becky wins at Rumble. Becky wins the Rumble. Well, we'll get to that later. She's good, man. She's she is good. good. She's I, very good. I didn't see... This is sad to me. I'll have to watch this on Hulu. I didn't see the New Day segment. Oh, it was pretty short. Okay. They, they held a funeral for uh, the trombone. Oh, okay. That's kind of It was funny. And then, uh, uh, and then uh, they had, there was a match between one of the Usos. Let me talk about the Usos really quick. Okay. Because uh, somebody tweeted at me yesterday. I forget who it was. I apologize. They, uh, they just mentioned Usos are in the ring. The crowd is completely dead. Now... The crowd seemed to be kind of like, when I was watching during the big segments, the crowd was kind of hot. They were laughing when they were supposed to laugh. They were chanting when they were, there was a good crowd. The Usos, according to this fellow on Twitter, and it got me thinking why the Usos, I thought they were going to come in with a head full of steam. Mm -hmm. And it makes me wonder. Well, they did at first. They did at first. But it makes me wonder, let me pose the question, has the tag division moved on from the Usos? Because think about when the Usos were hot. The tag division was arguably at its weakest. It had been in years. Mm -hmm. You had the Los Matadores who never got over. Mm -hmm. You had the primetime players before they got over, really. 
Um, and that was kind of it. There was like maybe one other tag team I'm missing out on here. Well, there was uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. A, who never, I mean, look, I love them as a tag team, but I think everybody just wanted to see Cesaro on his own. I know I did. They were a good tag they team. They were entertaining. But they, they were entertaining, but the entire, and I don't, they didn't really have enough time to really yeah, do what they were doing before Tyson, Kidd, yeah, got Tyson hurt, yeah. Kidd got hurt. So now it's, I mean, there's not a, there's not a huge turnover, but they're kind of is. You got the Lucha Dragons, who people love. Yeah. You have um, the New Day, who people love. The New Day, who are main eventers practically. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of all that, you look. You know, everybody in that crowd. I would speculate if you're going to plunk down money for a live show, you're probably plunking down money for the network, which means you're probably watching NXT. And look mm -hmm. at their tag division; mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Yeah, super strong. So you have all these tag teams to sort of enjoy. The Usos, in my opinion, my beef with the Usos was they never really brought anything new besides kind of a cool look, kind of a fresh look, and that sort of white, or not white, but that sort of um, white meat baby face thing, you know? That sort of like, hey, everybody, and shake hands and stuff. Well, they, they seem to, uh, when, they came, when they came back... Is white meat an okay term to use? That's not a bad term, is it? I, I think it's fine. <laughs> okay. That's just what I think, white meat baby face. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. All right. Um, you never know in this day and age. I know. Like, I don't know if this is bad or not. I don't know. <laughs> like, legitimately. It. You know, you don't like it. Fuck it. We'll move on. No. Uh, so, what were you going to say? Um, when they when they brought the Usos back, they seemed to bring a little bit of a ed comedic edge to them. Yeah. For two weeks. Yeah, and then that's gone. Yeah, and that, that, I mean, they, don't, they don't get any promo time. I really, dude, I really feel that, and this is me always having been, like, not an Uso fan. I feel like they need to sort of show off who they are. Don't worry about being just your your standard baby face. You yeah. need to show a little bit, like you said, an edge. Like let's see something more. Uh, was did we get it? Was Ambrose or Owens on the show last night? Yeah, Amb Ambrose. Ambrose uh, did commentary. On no, something, right? Owens did commentary during I'm Ambrose. Sorry, Owens, yeah. it was Ambrose and Kalisto. Owens was on a Twitter tear last night. Yeah, he was retweeting people, talking shit about their pictures. It was great. Um, Ambrose and Kalisto uh, wrestled against Del Rio and Sheamus. Oh, how was that? It was good. Okay, yeah, that sounds like something I probably could have seen on SmackDown. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then of course there was the the, the go home segment was the highlight reel. Yeah. Lesnar, Heyman came out and cut a promo. Did I miss it? Was this a standard Heyman promo? Uh, kind of, but Jericho cut him off. Okay. So they had some. Oh, that could have been fun. Yeah, okay. I'll, it, I'll watch it for that. Okay. It was good. I mean, it was you know, it was it was it was it wasn't funny. It yeah. Was good. Okay. Um, the goofy Jericho from earlier in the show was replaced by serious Jericho. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then uh, Jericho really wish he'd wear a shirt. Yeah. And then Jericho, you know, said, hey, what if it's me that eliminates Lesnar from the Royal Rumble? Yeah. Lesnar comes out. Reigns comes out. They they fight. <laughs> um, and then uh, League of Nations come out. Okay. They fight. <laughs> okay. And then the Wyatt show up. And it's like, I wonder, this, see, this sounds like there's as much enthusiasm the way you're describing it as it's described to the wrestlers no, going it wasn't into bad. It. Oh, it could be. That's what I'm saying. It's like, okay, then the League of Nations come out. They fight. Road dogs back there saying, <laughs> exactly. Right, they yeah. come out, you guys fight. <laughs> did you did you watch any of the, the JBL thing? With that, talk about like one of the biggest drop-offs in like interest for me was the, the, the JBL Eric Bischoff inter, two-part interview was fantastic. Fantastic. I imagine, yeah. There was a lot of shit in there that I'd never heard before. It was fantastic. And then we get Road Dog. I look, I like Road Dog. Oh, you didn't know? He he didn't tell any good road stories? I have no idea. Oh, you watched it. I had it. no oh, interest okay. in watching oh, okay. it. I might watch it when I'm really, really bored and I have nothing else to do. Um Okay, so the yeah, and then yeah, so Lesnar oh, comes out the range is gonna be uh, entrant number one in the Royal Rumble, which they did that in a really long, awkward segment with McMahon. Why does McMahon and Stephanie not have better chemistry? I feel like Stephanie is trying to... I don't know what's going on there, but I just feel like they're not as entertaining as they should be when they're together. Because Stephanie is hugely entertaining. Vince is hugely entertaining. When they're together doing stuff, it seems like they're trying too hard I think that's to play off each other. I think that's what or it is. Or she's trying too hard to play off him sometimes, I feel. Anyways. Um, so anyways, Reigns is number one in the Rumble. Kind of saw that happening. I yeah. mean, that was going to be obvious. Um, and then, yeah, uh, what else? Predictions. Rum rumble predictions that we're going to do now. Okay. Or no, we'll get... Oh, wait, hey, let's talk the about... Lights. Talk yeah, about the, the Wyatts. Yeah, the Wyatts, they, the, you know, lights went out. 
Lights came back on. You keep on. on looking at your phone. That's why I'm like. The lights went out. Lights came back on. Wyatt's around the ring with Lesnar and Reigns inside. I love that. Yeah. I, li- I like that was good. I always like when the, the Wyatt's dabble because the Wyatt's should be. They should be the chaotic element to the main event. That's what they should be. Mm-hmm. They should be. You never know when they're going to come out. You never know who they're going to fuck with. Yeah. And then there's there's but there's got to be some sort of master plan. There's some sort of game plan. Some sort yeah. of end game. For yeah. Them. There needs to be and and, and and as of yet, whenever uh, Wyatt has inserted himself into a storyline to mix things up, he's always, at least in terms of high profile matches come up short yeah by, yeah by and large yeah and so I'm wondering if th- I'm hoping that this year if he is in fact entering into a program with Lesnar that somehow that changes I agree I think it'd be I think it makes total because if he, if he loses Wrestlemania three years in a row I mean to a certain extent he is kind of above wins and losses because he can kind of laugh right it off. exactly but yeah. he's just not gonna be seen as a, a viable threat you always know that whatever high-profile guy they bring in to fight Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt's going to lose. Yeah. Exactly. And I at a certain agree. point, if that happens enough, you know, you're, you're going to lose interest. The Undertaker didn't build his career off of losing. And Bray Wyatt is kind of the modern-day Undertaker. This is that, this, you know, obviously he's not going to yeah. have WrestleMania streak. Um, but, no, I, I agree with all that. I really like, I really like the idea of the Wyatt family versus Lesnar. It gives Lesnar something fresh to do. Um, it gives and and Lesnar's not. I mean, Lesnar is in it for the payday, so he's fine losing. Yeah, I think if so. he needs to lose, and I think it really, I think it re- hugely helped. And I, I, I think if he loses not just to Wyatt, but you know, if you lose to Wyatt, you lose to the whole family. Exactly. If it takes four guys to beat Lesnar, that's so be it. That's still that still a loss helps. You can shrug off. That still helps the Wyatts, and it doesn't hurt Lesnar. Nope. Exactly. Nope. Um, so that's actually something I'm kind of interested in seeing. I, I really didn't want to see. It. Look, look. Full credit to you. Looks like your your Lesnar is a red herring thing was completely accurate. I I still will be surprised. Here's what I think is going to happen. Okay. Um, let's jump into Rumble predictions. Okay. But let's say that at the end of the Rumble, uh, Triple H is the champion. Okay. What I'm thinking is that Fast Lane, we're going to get Lesnar versus Reigns for the number one contender spot. Okay. White's come out, okay. screw Lesnar out of it, solidified their program. Reigns goes on to face Triple H at WrestleMania. I can't, I can't That's disagree I with any of that. Sounds that makes total sense. Um, Royal Rumble predictions. Okay, Royal Rumble predictions. What's the first match I have on here? U.S. Title match. Alberto Del. Rio. I can't roll my L's. Right I right. can't. R. Del. R. R. Del. Del Rio. Rio. Yeah. Against Versus Callisto. Callisto. Uh, Callisto has to win. I would this. think so. Because I mean. Everybody was, it makes me wonder, do you think that his raw win was a litmus test to see how people would react? It could be. I, th- I, I would hope so. It's, it's pretty ballsy if that were the case, they made it for the title. Because usually if they do that, it's a non-title match. Yeah. It wouldn't make any sense for them just to have him win up until SmackDown and then not get it back in the Rumble, unless they had plans for Del Rio, but evidently they don't. And Del Rio doesn't need the belt. He, like, that belt looks completely, like, I don't know, superfluous on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, uh, I say Callisto. What yeah, you me say? too. You say Callisto also. Okay. Tag titles. New Day versus the Usos. New Day have, have to keep them. I mean, are they going to go, are they going to revert to the Usos need something, so they're going to give them the titles? If so, I don't think that's going to happen until WrestleMania. The New Day having the titles is such part of their persona that they, they need to keep them. They do. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna say New Day. Yes, New Day. Uh, the Divas title. We didn't have a good record last pay per view, though, did we? I don't remember. I want to say that like, I was surprised at a lot of the a lot of the non title changes and title changes that we didn't predict last time. Anyways, uh, Divas title. Charlotte versus Becky Lynch. I'm gonna go on a limb. You're gonna say Becky. I'm gonna say Becky Lynch. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Charlotte. Probably because Becky Lynch is just a really strong opponent for her, but yeah. Charlotte, Sasha Banks at WrestleMania. I'm going to say, I'm going to, no, uh, sir, Sasha Banks is not going to go to WrestleMania against Charlotte. Is she even, how far along is she in her, re, like she, she's not even, I don't, she's not even wrestling right now. I know, but there's still plenty of time before now in WrestleMania. Except the program. It wouldn't surprise me if they took Becky Lynch, Charlotte, all the way to WrestleMania. They're making this out to be a huge thing. Well, it is. It's been a great feud. It's been a really good feud. Uh, and I love the, Ric Flair's role has been integral mm-hmm. too. I love that mm-hmm. shit. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to say Becky Lynch. I'm going to say Becky Lynch. Okay, I'll say Charlotte, so we, we differ on at least one. Yeah, ex- that's kind of the reason why I'm doing it. I see title. I see it. Seems like we're not getting Lesnar-Owens. So, I, it, I don't know what else... Unless Owens is going to wrestle The Undertaker at WrestleMania, I don't know what else he's going to do. 
So your prediction that they might carry this on to WrestleMania might be true. This is a last man standing match. Yeah. What could they do? What could they do? They could both get trapped under something and not be able to get up. It's like a double count out. Well, what what other match could they do at WrestleMania? I mean, obviously a ladder match. Or Hell in the Cell. Hell in the Cell. God, could you imagine a Hell in the Cell match for the IC title? I, I want that to happen, but I'm going to say Owens wins. I'm going to say Owens wins because we're going to need a face win at WrestleMania with Ambrose. I'm going to say some sort of dusty finish. Uh, don't defend it. Listen, Nobody guys, here's, here's my idea. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. <laughs> That's my new favorite thing, by the way. Okay, listen up, everybody. <laughs> Gather around. Okay, who's in this match? You, you. I'm booking it. Nobody wins. <laughs> That's how it goes. Dusty booking it, nobody wins. You know what we call that? A dusty finish. Because you know where the dusty come from? It's dusty gold. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Royal Rumble, number one reigns. And then you have 30, yeah, 29 uh, more slots. I believe it was, I think it was, was it Yost Han? Someone asked for us to book the, the entire Rumble. And I was like, sure. And I'm like, no. So let's do this. Okay. Uh, let's list some surprise entrants we think are going to be involved. Okay. And we'll give our, our final four. Okay. Yeah, and our eventual good. winner. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I mean, any of the spots, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can call Because, like, I, f- I feel like it's going to... I just watched the 92 Rumble. And I feel like it's going to kind of follow that pattern where there'll be a face and then, like, two or three heels in succession. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another face to increase the odds. I think... Uh, here, here, okay, here, losing, you know? here's one of my predictions for the Rumble. We're going to see a lot of Wyatt family in this Rumble. Yeah, all of them. You've are got, you've got uh, what, one sixth of it? One fifth of it? One fifth. One fifth of it? No. There's five of them, so it's one sixth. There's four of them. There's four of them? Yeah. Oh, you're right. There's four of them. So uh, one, one seventh. seventh. Okay, so one seventh of the Rumble is the family. Well, you're going to have them, and then the League of Nations are all going to be in it. So that's okay. eight guys. There you go. Yeah. And I'm sure the social outcasts, well, I guess their heels, are going to be in it. So that's 12 heels. Social outcasts are faces. I don't think they are. They fought off the Wyatts. They're the lovable outcasts. They're the lovable, the lovable good guys. I don't know. Who are just trying for a shot. They're the underdogs. Of course they are. Social okay, well, well but anyways, they... It doesn't matter. It's still like a big chunk of guys there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what is that? Eight, that's 12 guys. That's 12 guys. Roman Reigns is 13. Big Show is 14. Yeah. Jericho well, is 15. I, I listed all the confirmed participants in there. Oh, here we go. Um, okay. I'm guessing the New Day will be in it. The New Day, which makes it 18. Yeah. So 17 against... Reigns, in theory. Yeah. And then, but I mean, my, my point is, like, well, we have some spots here. We have some spots here for some surprise guys. The, 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 the first and foremost, and it's funny, when McMahon said, are we going to see somebody you've, or I think Stephanie said, are we going to see somebody you've never seen in the WWE? The entire crowd said AJ. Yeah. Are we going to see AJ Styles? He's teased it, like, twice now. Then the, but the latest reports on the dirt sheets is that he won't be able to pass all his medical tests in time. I read the other day he hasn't even literally like actually signed yeah. yet. So I think but that could happen. that could be all misinformation. So we I think it's there. totally gonna. See happen. the thing about that though is he, if he debuts at the Rumble, gets a, a good pop from the Orlando crowd because that's where TNA shoots, I guess. Um, he's not gonna win. No, he's not gonna win. He can have a good showing, but if if you're gonna debut him, I I kind of get why they would wait. Until do you think? The let me ask you this. Do you, do you think it. they would ever do this? Do you think they would go so indie nerd? as to have Finn Balor show up and AJ Styles show up and have a moment where it's just those two facing off. Crowd would mark out huge. Mm -hmm. Huge. And in this day and age, I firmly believe that so much of the live crowd and the people that are plunking down for the network know that story. At least have some semblance of knowledge of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This could be cool. Yeah. I want to say that's going to happen. Okay. I, I so hope Finn Balor does. and AJ Styles are two of your surprise entrants. I believe so, yeah. I guess it's not much of a surprise we say Triple H is going to be in it because that's, you know. Like oh, a, yeah, yeah. That's like a yeah. poorly kept secret. Okay, if, we'll put it this way. If Triple H is in it, he's winning it. Yeah. He's in it to win it. Yeah. I, I think you're right about it, man. I think you're right. I that's so surprised. I'm still going to be shocked if Triple H wins because I'm a Triple H guy. I know you are. I love Triple H. I, how many times has he won a big, a big championship? 12, 13. Not 14 that, maybe? It's not that I know I know he wants for the business for it to be seen and to be the number one guy. But it's not that too many too many more title reigns. I kinda wonder if this is kind of his last go though. If, you think so? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. If if maybe. Could be. 
Uh, let's see here. Any other? Give me another surprise uh, guy. I don't think Daniel Bryan is going to be in it. No, I don't think so. What about either. The Undertaker? No, I don't think he's going to be in it. You don't think so? Mm. They got to do something pretty soon to set up a WrestleMania feud. Yeah, I know, but I mean, with, the, with Wyatt, what, two years ago? Was yeah. Wyatt two years ago? They, yeah. they tossed that together really quick. But it was at least a month and a half before WrestleMania. Yeah. It was, he was doing promos for a while before. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just saying it was Undertaker. after the Rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know. Um... But it's a major event, you know. It seems like the Undertaker's up to work in more days. You're right. You're so. right about that. I guess it wouldn't surprise me. It'd be shocking. Mm-hmm. It'd be shocking. I'd love to see it. Um, trying to think, who else? I have some more names on. I read. That. I read that. I read that the plan right now is to put the two other Bullet Club guys into in NXT. NXT. Yeah, so I don't, team, yeah. I don't see that happening. Um, what about the Rock. I would really doubt it. Yeah, me too. I would really doubt. What about it. Randy Orton making a return? Don't care. Would hope he lost. He didn't. He would hope he got eliminated soon. I'm, I, don't, I don't care about Randy Orton. Maybe, yeah, sure. Fill it out. People like him. People mark out for Randy. I don't. I don't mind him anymore. He's so boring. He's just, to me, he's filler. He's filler. Randy doesn't care unless he's being used properly, which is fine. But he, how can he even be used properly anymore? What role could he possibly have? I mean, really, the, his proper role is, is helping younger talent get over. Exactly, but I don't know. I don't. But he he he's such a pro, though. I mean, in all the little details, he he, he mm, throws into his matches. Yeah, no, he is. Look, he's a professional make on, on many levels. Yeah, but when he's I don't know when he's in a program that I think he might think is below him. And this is all speculation. I don't fucking know the guy, but I just feel like yeah, I don't know if he cares enough to. That's really a fair point. Give his all into it. Uh, let's see here. Anybody else? Um, Did you he- see uh, that, uh, according to Ric Flair, they tried to get HBK to be in the Rumble? Oh, I saw something about that. I thought, wow, really? According to Ric Flair. Wow. But I don't, he wouldn't have won, I don't think. No, he definitely wouldn't have. Well, could you imagine that? Shawn Michaels comes and wins the belt? That'd be weird. That'd just be weird. It'd be kind of awesome, but it'd be really weird. What if Kurt Angle comes and wins the belt? I know he's still under contract with TNA. That'd be great. I honestly think, look, I think no matter what, I think you're right. I think Triple H is going to leave with the belt. Nobody else is going to... Kurt Angle would be fantastic, but anybody that big, I feel, would be, like, disturbed by coming in and then losing somehow. Oh, at WrestleMania? Whoever wins the belt at the Rumble, I feel like, is going to lose it at WrestleMania. I agree totally, which is why it's fine for Triple H to do it. Yeah. But nobody else is going to come... I mean, unless... I don't. I, I don't. I, I, it's going to be Triple H because last time we saw Triple H on Raw was when Roman Reigns was beating the crap out of him. It has to be him. Yeah. Yeah. That's just still weird to me. He's so old. Um, He's not as old as the Undertaker. Other surprise entrance. Kane. Yeah. You'll see. Kane has to be in it. Kane has to be because every year they reference he has like the record for something. Most eliminations. Most during eliminations. Forty six. Yeah. They ran a promo last night. Okay. And that was one of the stats. There, there you go. He's in it. Uh, let's see here. Who else you got in here? Yeah. Do you think Jack Swagger is going to be it? I hope not. I don't want these filler guys, man. I want, like, cool. I want, like, even RVD. Bring RVD. Yeah. Tommy Dreamer. I'd be happy with Tommy Dreamer. Dudleys are going to be in there probably. One thing I noticed about the 92 Royal Rumble is, like, you know, they had a steady stream of decent guys throughout, and then Macho Man came out. Yeah. And they're like, like I think he was 20 or something like that. And they had a couple of guys that were like, yeah, this is cool. And then they brought out the Warlord. It's like, who is this guy? Yeah. And he was eliminated instantly. And it's like they're building up some really int- good momentum. Yeah. And then they bring out the Warlord. Mr. Kayfabe Corner. Yeah. <laughs> so give me your, your final four. Okay. Uh, well, it's got to be Triple H, Reigns, Lesnar, and... Um, they've been making a big deal about Jericho lately. Yeah. I'll say either Jericho or Sheamus. I'm saying Reigns, Lesnar, Triple H, Wyatt. Oh, Wyatt. Or are you saying Reigns, Lesnar, Triple H, Wyatt? Yeah, I, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. You're right, Wyatt, because Wyatt's the Wyatt is the he's the interrupter. You're right. Yeah. He's the guy because if we, if you have three anti Reigns heels, their Reigns gonna be out like immediately. So you're right. I think Wyatt. Yeah, makes sense. All right. We I feel it. like the Wyatt. I feel like we Ray did Wyatt's it, man. Coming in around twenty. Yeah, I think the first two are gonna be Reigns and maybe. I Rusev. think we're gonna. I, I think we're gonna see some of these guys. Some some of this some of the rumble is just going to be the Wyatts hanging out in the ring because mm-hmm. those guys all at some point they're all going to be in there and they're all going to eliminate whoever isn't a Wyatt 
and then we're just gonna which I think is cool. The rumble look, the rumble is well. They always... can't do that because Reigns is number one. He's gonna last till the end. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind then. Um, the rumble is always the most fun match usually of the year in terms of just watching it and marking out. Yeah, where are we gonna watch that? Are we gonna get together and watch it? Yeah, we're, of course we're gonna. Get okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, um, it's it's always a blast. It's always a yeah. lot of fun. Uh, oh, Baron Corbin. He shouldn't be anywhere near that match. <laughs> I, would, I really want it. He's got to be next up here. By the way, somebody asked me this. They said, if we want to contribute to the Going In Raw set, where can we send stuff? P.O. Box 1814, Orangevale, California 95662. We'll put it in the description. And by all means, if you guys want to send us stuff, we'll put it on the Going In Raw set. Yeah. Right now, we've got a title, and we've got a picture of Dan and Br primetime yeah. Brian Lee. And Razor Ramon's behind me. Razor Ramon's behind you. We've got to center him a little bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there it is. There's there's the rumble. We booked it uh, as to the best of our ability, I believe. So who's coming in twenty nine? Well, let's say this: Where, when is Lesnar coming in? Triple H is thirty, obviously. Yeah, Triple H is last. Um, I think Wyatt is, Bray Wyatt is going to be in the late teens, early twenties. Lesnar yeah. will probably be in the twenties as well. Yeah, they'll they'll be just somewhere in the middle of the mix. They're not important. I mean, they'll last, but you know, Lesnar is probably like you know. They're like 24, 25. Exactly. In his contract, he probably says, you know, I'm not going to I don't want to be in there for an hour. I don't want to be in there 23 minutes maximum. Okay, Brock, that's fine. You're just trying to give it to the old man. Okay. That's good, Brock. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so there you go. There's our Make sure you, you let us know what your Rumble predictions are. Yeah, put them in the comments. In the comments below. Uh, how long have we gone so far? About half an hour. Oh, we're a half hour? Okay, yeah. it's about a good time for Kayfabe Corner then. Yeah. All right. What is Kayfabe Corner? It's the ultimate wrestling challenge. Larson here on Going In Raw. We're the exclusive home to the Kayfabe Corner. It's 12 names. 12 names, six real, six fake. I'm going traditional this week. Okay, is another territory. No, it's not. I wrote it I'm down. Gonna, I'm going to look straight ahead this whole time. All right. On my Cal State Northridge examination booklet that my parents found in the garage. Is there a theme? There is a theme. I'll tell you the theme at the end before the trivia question. Okay, if There's, I don't if I don't get it beforehand. Of which there are two. Of course, there are always two. Number one. One. Kyle von Steiger. Fake. Very good. Number two. I have a good feeling about you today. Butch Boyd. Real. Fake. Never mind. My good feeling is dissipated. There's only one wrong. Number three. Three. Frank Goodish. Real. Very good. Bobby Main. Real. Very good. Kelly Manson. Real. Fake. Red River Jack. Real. Very good. That's a great name. That's a good name. King Kong Bruiser. Fake. Very good. Len Sexton. Real. Fake. C.T. Knight the Boss. <laughs> uh, real? Good. I couldn't make that up. No. What are you at right now? Nice. Look at you. Rapido Gonzalez. <laughs> real? Fake. It was like Rapido, it was a different last name, but it was still Spanish. It's, still, many, it's many, still equally silly. Yeah, how many do we have left? Two more. Okay. Chicky Star. Real. Good. Tank Patton. Fake. Real. Fuck. <laughs> What'd you get? Seven. Seven's good. You have a chance at, let's see, are you going to get this? You, I didn't know this, so I don't think you're going to know okay. this. All right, the theme. Were you able to guess the theme? No. Do you know who Frank Goodish is? Mm -mm. The real name of Bruiser Brody. Oh, okay. This is a Bruiser Brody center. Bruiser Brody is my starting point. Uh, let's see here. Red River Jack was another Bruiser Brody name. Okay. Great name. Um, let's see here. King Kong. He was actually he went under yeah, King, King Kong, Kong Brody. Yeah, I remember that. I just changed that. that up a little bit. And then I think I just went from whatever territory he was. Oh, Southwest Championship Wrestling. I started finding people there. Uh, let's see here. 
All right. As you guys may or may not know, Bruiser Brody was stabbed to death. Yeah, in Puerto uh, Rico. In Puerto Rico by a guy named, I think his name was like Juan Gonzalez, something like that. Juan mm-hmm. something or another. Um, who was he set to fight prior to him being stabbed? I know that's Carlos. It was Carlos Colon's territory. I'll say Carlos Colon. Incorrect. Uh, Dan Spivey. Okay. Oh, I guess I knew that shit. Dan Spivey is one of those names that like I never remember, but mm-hmm. then when I hear it, I'm always like, oh, yeah. Dan Spivey. Yeah. Which is weird. Dan Spivey also had a, a gimmick that uh, predated Bray Wyatt's. It was also based off of uh, the Robert De Niro character in uh, Cape Fear. Cape Fear? Huh. Yeah. Waylon something or another. Hmm. Exactly the same shit. Not like modern eye, because now it's like cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back then, I think it was kind of cheap. It was WCW, I think. All right, second uh, question. Yeah. This one you're not going to get, but it's really interesting. Okay. What was, Bruder, what was Bruiser Brody's nickname behind the scenes? This was a surprising one. I don't know. The Intelligent Monster. Hmm. Apparently, contrary to like the fact that he no-sold the shit out of Lex Luger and then really started beating the crap out of him. Yeah. Contrary to the fact that he got stabbed to death. Uh, apparently he was a super intelligent guy. He was well educated. He had a real passionate love for the wrestling business. And, and although apparently he was very difficult to work with promoters, whenever a promoter needed a higher gate, they needed help, apparently he'd work for anybody if they asked him. He'd be like, yeah, because he drew a lot of money. Yeah. So, interesting things yeah, about Bruiser. Yeah, interesting, because his persona was, you know, like, he Right, crazy. exactly. Yeah, I think he's crazy, but apparently he, and apparently he was like... He, like, did a lot of shit production-wise behind the scenes. Like, apparently, I think he booked in WCW or WCCW at some point. Oh, that's cool. Um, so, a lot of interesting things there about Bruiser Brody. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, just because you no-sell Lex Luger and start beating the crap out of him. To be honest, if I ever fought Lex Luger, I might no-sell him and beat the crap out of him, too. Because it's like Lex Luger. Eric Bischoff, for some reason, had a seething hatred know. for Lex Luger. And he always points out, professionally and personally... Yeah. He hated Lex Luger. I don't get it. I don't know why that would be. I don't know either. Why would people dislike Lex Luger? He is the total package. What? I'm just, I'm trying to speculate here. I don't know either. Why do you think? Speculate with me. I don't know. I literally don't know. I would love for somebody to send us a Lex Luger picture we can put up back here. See, I'm doing this. (laughs) Whatever. Yeah, anything. It doesn't matter which Lex Luger current day when he's like all emaciated and stuff and weird because he got paralyzed on a plane trip that's the story what a weird maybe next time i'll do a lex luger centric <laughs> cape what's his real name i forget oh um, you know his real name it's one of those you kick yourself yeah how <laughs> when you hear it it's like larry f- <laughs> fall F- F- yeah larry F- <laughs> <laughs> good job all right anyways uh, that's it for going in raw this week um, I was gonna. I, is there any announcements? You can check us out on iTunes. Yeah. Um, we'll be back with a Royal Rumble recap on Monday. Hey, you know what? I think we're in a groove. This felt like it usually does. Yeah. Last week it did feel a little awkward sitting next to each other. I, it felt should we, good about Should us. I leave the table in the car then? No! Oh, beer shots! Cards! We'll be sitting here playing rummy while we're doing the episode. We should, play, we should play a Trivia Mania, WWE's uh, official. A special trivia going game. in Raw edition. Trivia Mania. Uh, we're definitely going to have our regular Sunday show. Um, I'm sorry, our Monday sh- Monday morning show. Yeah, Royal Rumble recap. Well, it's morning for us. When we record it, yeah. Yeah. And then we'll come back again Tuesday night for another one of these deals. But next, uh, the Rumble recap will probably be not on camera. It'll be yeah, yeah, just yeah. your standard audio podcast because yeah. we have Dan uh, hopefully coming in. And then uh, maybe we'll see. Uh, Total Biscuit, I said, I think, said on Twitter that he's going to try to make it. So we'll see if we can get back in here. If not, we'll just be us. Dingus is again yeah. for going in raw. We'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>